Welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up this week, I've got a Volkswagen Caravette van. This is a Matchbox Lesney number 34B. This is a later model with the black plastic wheels. I uh, still have yet to acquire a metal wheel model. Um, but this particular model seems to be extremely desirable, both amongst uh, matchbox collectors as well as the uh, Volkswagen community. So it seems like whenever I find these, the price tends to be somewhere north of $60, 60 to $80, especially if they're in good condition and they have uh, the doors on them. Um, if they have an original box, well over $100. And in this case, I was able to pick this model up as part of a larger lot. Uh, you probably saw it in one of my earlier uh, mailbag videos. And uh, this model, as you can see, is missing the doors. Um, the interior looks like it's not in bad shape. The exterior, heavily, heavily play-worn. Um, lots of high-edge wear, surface wear. Um, the glass on this model is not in great shape, but uh, I was able to pick it up very affordably and uh, thought this would be a good candidate for restoration. This particular model of Matchbox is a little different than some of the other restorations you've seen me do. It, uh, the base is held on with these little tabs here at the front and the back. It doesn't have a center post, a rivet to be drilled out. Um, it's just held in there kind of with tension. And so to remove the base, I'm just working very carefully with a little pair of tweezers here to pry back uh, the shallower tab, which is the one at the, the rear of the model. Um, and by removing that or prying against the, uh, the casting, um, I can pull the whole base out in one piece. Um, so here you can see we've got a few chips, especially right there at the doors. Um, but the rest of this base appears to be in pretty decent shape. Um, we've got our interior glass. Here you can see a, a little crack that's on the top. And uh, I think instead of replacing the glass on this, I'm going to try to repair that. Um, I've had an idea that I've wanted to try for a while. Um, you can see the top is really, really heavily scratched and worn. And it's got that little crack coming right from the, the post. So we're going to try a little different method than I've seen before. In order to remove the glass, um, I'm using one of my shallow tip uh, drill bits, just slightly larger than the diameter of the rivet. And you can see I'd, I'm just holding this in my hand and working very, very slow to kind of inch up on those rivets. There's not a lot of material there. I don't want to go too deep. I don't want to eat into the plastic on the glass. Um, I really just want to barely remove the flange that's on those rivets, uh, just to take enough off that I can pop that glass loose. So I've gone ahead and I've stuck the main casting into my stripper bin and while I'm waiting for the paint to strip I uh, thought I would go ahead and mix up a little of my gloss green. Um, this is a straight testers color. Uh, I made very slight modifications to it but it's pretty much uh, an exact match to what the base was. Um, I chose not to strip this base out. It was in pretty decent shape. So all I'm doing is just touching up the areas of the base that showed wear. Um, a little bit on the bottom and then just uh, hitting those small areas where I had some scratches on the base. Um, I, as I've gotten into this, you know, I can really kind of tell um, the areas where the original paint was, was good. And uh, I've tried not to go over um, any of those areas, but just just touching up real light with my airbrush um, the areas that were damaged. So while I wait for the base paint to dry, um, here you can see I've got the original casting out of the stripper and cleaned up, and it actually looks pretty good. 
Um, and so now it's time for me to try to find a paint match. I'm starting out with the same gloss green and a little bit of gloss white. Um, and I know that it's going to be a process to, to do that. Um, and looking for my missing doors, I was able to find one door that is an original. And the paint on that is pretty good, so I'm not going to strip it. And I always like having original over reproduction. Um, so if anyone has a lead on the doors, I just have the one. I'm still missing the uh, the front door for this model. Um, so if you know where I can pick one up that's uh, not a reproduction, that'd be great. I did order a set of reproduction doors uh, for this. And they came in and they are not even close to being the correct size. So I don't know if they were intended for one of the other models. I did make sure that I ordered the correct ones. That was a uh, Caravette B. And uh, I don't know if the supplier just messed up or misunderstood. Um, or if I misunderstood and, and didn't specify correctly which set of doors I wanted. But uh, the reproduction ones that I, I got in for this restoration um, do not fit. They're, they're far too small, far too short. And so um, I'm going to start with my original door here as a, a reference for my color match. When I'm mixing paint, um, I always like to start with the lighter color first, in this case the white. Um, it's much easier to inch up and uh, darken it. If you get it too dark or overcolored, it takes an incredible amount of the, the lighter color to get you back to where you need to be. So I much more prefer to start out with the lighter color and slowly add just a drop or two of my darker colors to get my color match correct. Um, so with just the white and the green, you can see that this is a little too minty, um, a little too much of the blue and the green in there. So I think I need to add just a touch of yellow to this. So I'm going to come in here with my Tester's Gloss Yellow. Um, and just add a very, very small drop of the yellow to try to tint that a little bit closer to the original color um, that I had on my, on my door as a reference. Um, to mix my paint, I like using this little cappuccino frother. Um, it's a tip I picked up from one of the other uh, restoration channels that I watch, and it just works really, really well. And I do have a link to that down in the description as well as most of the tools that I use in my restorations. So that is looking like a pretty good color match. Um, so with that, I'm going to get my airbrush loaded up and start with my base coat on the casting. When I paint my models, I do like to use the Tester's enamel paints. Um, as far as I can tell and from the research that I've done, Lesney used enamels in their original um, factory finishes, and so I do the same. I'm making one change on this casting, and that is that I am going to paint the interior of the casting as well. I think with the doors open and being able to see the uh, dark green interior, it will look just a little bit nicer to have all of the interior of this casting finished. On the glass and canopy on this, uh, you can see this, um, this plastic has an issue that an awful lot of the canopies have, and that is it's got a, a few stress cracks in it. You can see some of those fractures. The top is very, very play-worn, very scratched up and rough. And um, I wanted to try something uh, that I've had the idea for a while and had no idea if it would work or not. I went and I bought one of these windshield repair kits. Um, this is the kind of thing that you buy to repair a chip or a crack in your windshield. Um, and from what I can tell, um, the, the crack when you see it in a piece of glass or a piece of plastic it's actually the air, it's the oxygen that is trapped between those layers of glass. That's what uh, glints and reflects on the light. And so the idea behind these little repair kits 
is that they give you this syringe and they give you a little bit of uh, resin and you inject the resin down into the crack and then you pull it under a vacuum in order to uh, suck all of the air out of that crack and in doing that it allows the resin to fill in all those gaps and most of the time when the repair is done you can see very very little of the original crack um, it won't ever completely disappear if you're looking for it you'll still be able to find it and see it but it does keep the cracks from spreading and getting any worse and uh, it fills in the the biggest part that is reflective that helps it to be noticeable now this canopy is so small i don't think that i'm going to be able to use the adhesive and actually do the injection and then pull the vacuum and go through all of that Maybe on a, a larger surface that would work, but I do think the resin will work. And so what I'm going to attempt to do here with this canopy is squirt a little bit of resin down into that crack. I want to very, very gently pry on it just to get it to open up and allow the resin to work itself down into the crack on the plastic. Now I have to be super careful when I do that because I don't want the crack to spread. I don't want to make it any worse than it already is. Um, and I just want to try to do my best uh, with a little even pressure to allow that resin to work itself down into those surface cracks, those little stress fractures that are in the plastic. And um, as I release the pr pressure on it, I can actually see some of the resin kind of squirt back out. And that's how I know I've got it down deep enough in those cracks. Um, when all that's done, I'm going to follow the directions in the kit. I'm going to apply a little bit onto the surface of the glass, cover it with the little plastic uh, piece that they give you, the little finish strip. And then um, this resin is actually activated by sunlight. So when I get all this set, I'm going to run this outside to cure in the sun. Most of my paint is now dry. I've gone ahead and cleaned up these wheels and axles. Uh, for the axles, I did my usual method, which is an overnight soak in some uh, plain white vinegar to remove all of the surface rust on those. So you can see these wheels, as I said in the beginning of the video, the, the base and the wheels are really in pretty good shape. Um, and so as I go to reassemble it, I want to find the best side of each of the wheels and make sure that I've got those pointed outward. Um, and I'm doing a little pre-assembly up here on my mat, and then I'll take these down to my shop and use Marty's method on my drill press to mushroom over the ends of the axles. This is a, it's a pretty ingenious method, and a um, huge shout out to Marty for pioneering this, figuring out how to make this work. Um, I've got two little pieces, two little dies that I've made for my my drill press. Uh, the piece on the bottom is just a simple nail um, with a little divot in it. The top piece is a, uh, a hardened uh, bit out of one of my bit sets that I've put a little recess in and it just works great. So it's been about 15 minutes since I set the canopy outside to cure um, and you can see that that resin has hardened. It's kind of gone off and I'm not completely disappointed with this because I, I went into this having absolutely no idea if this was going to work or not. But um, you can see in the sunlight that that little crack that's running through the canopy is still visible. I was really hoping that that would kind of come go away, you know, with this uh, treatment. Um, I do have some excess resin on the top. And so I'm using a little quad ot steel wool. And I'm just running that across the, the top of the canopy. Um, I want to sand that out, get it all flush and even. Um, and since, you know, this canopy was incredibly scratched up to begin with, this is also a nice uh, kind of prep treatment to move on to my plastic polishing and buffing that we'll do on this. So when I went to pick up the windshield crack repair kit, I found this headlight lens restorer. And it says that it's good for removing scratches on plastic. And so I thought I would give that a shot on this canopy. 
Now, I've already gone and, you know, sanded this and buffed it with my uh, polisher, my aluminum uh, polish, and it really did a pretty good job of clearing it up, but I've seen different restorers use the uh, the Pledge Floor Shine or other dips. Um, there's a, I believe it's called Gauzy, is a product that's made specifically for model makers to give Canopy that glassy look, and uh, I thought I would give this a shot and see what kind of a job it does. So here we have our fully restored glass canopy. Uh, this is the original glass, and original is always better than reproduction. As you can see, uh, the crack that was running through the metal didn't quite disappear. Um, it's definitely less noticeable than it was when I started the restoration, um, but it is still there, especially when you look at it from an angle. Um, I can always order a replacement canopy at some point if I want to, but for right now, I think, you know, having a less noticeable crack in an original canopy is still uh, better than having a replacement piece in there, at least to me. Um, our base came back together just beautifully. Uh, all the little surface nicks and cracks are gone. I was able to retain the original paint on most of the interior and touch up those spots on the base that were uh, really damaged. Um, and I think that... Uh, this original door, I, I found this actually on an eBay auction. Uh, it was just the one door, and uh, I, I think, you know, when I put this in, you can really tell just how close I came on that color match. I can hardly tell any difference between the original door, which has not been painted, and the uh, the restored casting. So pretty happy with how that, how that turned out. For the reassembly, I'm going to do just in reverse the same thing I did to take it apart. I'm starting with the deeper tab, which is at the rear, and uh, installing that first. Um, and then I want to try, and I've seen different methods for how to get these doors in, um, but I want to try to have it lined up. And then I'm using one of my dental picks um, just to pry out the uh, upper casting and get that little tab to slot back down. And this is one of those things I feel like I need four hands to be able to do it all. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that door in there. I may just get the casting back together and then come back and do the door at the end. So this is actually looking really, really good. And we're down to the last step, which is putting back in some of those silver accents and details on the exterior. I like to use these uh, Pilot Silver markers and uh, I use a very fine tip brush and I like to just squeeze out a little of that silver paint um, onto the underside of one of my little mixing cups. Um, gives me enough ink to work with and uh, then I can come back in and with a very fine tip craft brush just go in and add back all those little details. For this particular casting um, I want to do you know what Lesney did originally for sure and highlight the uh, the bumpers and the headlights um, the VW logo and uh, like most of my restorations I like to take it just one step further and highlight you know the door handles and other little details in the casting that make the uh, Matchbox Lesney casting so so cool, so popular. So um, I'm going to uh, just let the video run and let you watch this.
So here is our reminder of where we started out with this restoration. Uh, as I said before, you know, this was a rough casting and missing pieces. Interior looked pretty decent, but for a model that typically goes for, you know, $80 to $100, I was able to pick this one up for less than $10. So um, a good deal, good way to fill out some holes in your collection if you can do a, a restoration um, it's always nice to have a restored model as a placeholder until you can find a really good original one. So that's what this one's going to be. And here is our fully restored VW Caravette van. As you can see, I'm still missing one of the doors. And I'll stay on the hunt for that. I'm sure I can find an original one of these days. And uh, I'll be able to finish this up. But for right now, I'm really pretty pleased with how this turned out. Uh, this is a, a great piece for me to add to my collection. Uh, I'm still on the hunt for the metal wheel, um, but compared to where this model started out, um, I'm pretty happy with the, the end result. The, uh, the green enamel paint really turned out nice. I like the accents on the bumpers and the handles and all the little details and um, this is uh, this has been a pretty sweet little restoration for me to work on, and uh, I've really enjoyed it a lot. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it as well. If you did, give me a like down below. As always, leave me your comments. Let me know what you think I did right, what I did wrong, and uh, don't forget to click that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our future restorations here on Vintage Diecast Restoration.